Hello, this is Mark Thornton at the Minor Issues Podcast, and I want to thank you for listening and sharing it with your friends and on social media. I'm also here to remind you that the Mises Institute will be at Freedom Fest July 10th through the 13th in Las Vegas. And I also want to remind you about our great Supporter Summit Conference in Hilton Head, South Carolina, October 10th through the 12th. I hope to see you there. Welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. People can't stop the Federal Reserve from inflating the money supply, nor can we prevent them from adding more fuel on the fire. We can only fight the fire started by the arsonist at the Fed from spreading further into our lives. In this episode, I want to review the ways that people fight the Fed's fire, higher prices everywhere around them, and the reasons why everyone should be actively fighting against inflation. These techniques require some thinking, choosing, and acting. It isn't a pleasant thing to do. After all, budgeting helps us set a pattern in life, and the Fed's inflation disrupts our pattern in a bad way. Most people will respond that they are not willing to do these things or that they can't do these things. I would encourage you to listen and think them over. You might come up with workarounds or even better ideas. Please send me your ideas. Other people will respond that they already do these things. And a few people might even respond that this is the way they've always done things. In fact, most people have already had to make some such adjustments because of the Fed's inflation. And that is why people consider it one of the worst problems we face today. They are forced to adjust their lives in a bad way because of rising prices and stagnant real incomes. I would argue that it is better to take preemptive measures to fight inflation now rather than to have to passively respond when the Fed tightens your belt the passive, desperate response is typically confused and not your best alternative. You are likely not going to make the best decisions when the pressure is on and maybe turn to credit cards to bail you out. You tend to blame life when your ire should be reserved for the Fed itself. These suggestions are offered because they might be better for you to consider in terms of economics, personal psychology, and some of them might even be better in terms of health. So these are the steps to consider. Increase your income. Your labor is in demand. Maybe someone other than your current employer has a better offer for you in terms of wages, benefits, and risks. Like many other things on the list, this may not apply to you or may not be something you want to do keep track of your responses. You may be able to increase your hours of work. Many employers are seeking extra workers. Maybe your boss would consider more hours of work, preferably at overtime rates. Increase your workplace skills. You may be able to move up with your current employer, increase your skills for a better type of job, or develop a new skill where you can earn money in your spare time. Work that you can do for yourself instead of hiring someone else is more important, actually, when you consider you are paying with after-tax income. You may have to earn $1,000 to pay somebody $680 to paint your fence. If you take care of your own yard, clean your own house, wash your own clothes, and fix your own stuff, You may save lots of money, and then you may not even need that expensive gym membership. This is a big one that will be divided up into several categories. Every expenditure category can be reduced eventually. You may not be able to reduce your car or your house expenditure today, but at least you can start thinking about it today and start to develop your alternatives. It is hard to reduce housing expenditures, but it's a big one. 
what would be more efficient for your family in terms of size, number of bedrooms, to rent or to own? Most households actually have multiple unused rooms, which might mean higher mortgages, higher rents, and higher power bills. Although this is fraught with dangers, consider renting space in your house or sharing apartment expenses with a trustworthy friend or relative. I told you that people would balk at some of these suggestions. How about that storage unit? That unit is in effect part of housing expense that many could do without or do without in some other way. There are 25 million storage units in the United States. Electric power is a big expense, and it's going up for heating and cooling. Adjust your thermostat a couple degrees is an obvious one, and your clothing as well. In summer, use fans in a dehumidifier in humid climates and fans and humidifiers in dry climates. Try to reduce or eliminate alcohol, tobacco, and other goods with high taxes, such as reducing the amount of gasoline you use by walking, carpooling, and the use of multi-step trips. Not only are you saving money and getting healthier, but you are also starving the beast that is trying to ruin your family's life. Food is a big expense. Many Americans have already downsized from restaurants to fast food joints to save money, but fast food has also gone up in price. The publication The Street reports that fast food items have increased roughly 100% in price since COVID. Consider fixing your own meals at home so that you are not paying for the higher prices, higher cost of labor, and minimum wage law increases around the country. At the same time, you are developing your home survival skills. I'm not talking great skills here. Start just making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, for example. Using Kroger store brand prices, I calculate you can make a standard peanut butter and jelly sandwich for 50 cents. And that comes in at almost 400 calories. Add a glass of milk and a piece of fruit or a handful of nuts for a quick, healthy, and cheap meal. The keto version of peanut butter and jelly that I make for myself comes in closer to $1.50. Multiply these savings by cutting your calories. Most Americans, including those in poverty, are overweight. And the best overall thing we can do for our health is to go on a mild calorie-restricted diet of about 90% of the calories you usually consume. Now that you have changed where and what you eat, try buying larger sizes. In my peanut butter example, a one pound jar of peanut butter is 15% more expensive per ounce than the 40 ounce jar, plus you pay more taxes. The two pack of sugar-free peanut butter that I buy at Sam's Club is less than $9. If you reserve your bulk purchases to those items on sale that week, your saving can increase dramatically. Yes, I know people, some of them don't like peanut butter and others are allergic. This is just an example. There are many items that can be bought in large quantities, but there are two important qualifications. One, only buy big when you already use a product on a regular basis. And two, make sure it's not something that will go bad. So, of course, cleaning supplies, paper goods, basic toiletries and hygiene products, as well as salt, pepper, garlic powder, of course, can be considered. Now, I'm not going to recommend that you start farming crops, raising chickens, or buying sides of beef. But perhaps picking your own strawberries for freezing, or growing your favorite cooking herb, or comparing prices from the store with a farmer's market, is up for you to try. It's a start. Many of these suggestions require a bit of knowledge and experience to pull off correctly. However, 
learning is typically low cost, tax free, and can either save money or earn money. Look for opportunities that interest you the most and that you already show an aptitude for. A key to this process is to cut expenditures ahead of inflation, creating a cushion in your budget. The savings will not be enormous immediately, but can widen over time. One part of that savings can be given over to family style entertainment or a money saving tool. Another part to create a savings cushion and a third can be used to pay down variable rate loans, like credit card debts. Interest on credit card balances is often the worst family budget offender, and its elimination should be a top priority. Of course, all of these suggestions are not original to me, but come from people with some standing on such family budgetary problems. Adopting some of them will help you weather the inflationary storm ahead and make you a more stable and better qualified opponent of the state.